Today we're going to be machining a brake drum. And I'm going to go through the procedure of uh, setting up a brake drum on the Amco brake uh, lathe. Let's take a look at the steps involved in machining a brake drum. First, there's going to be a little bit of preparation work before uh, we go ahead and put the drum on the lathe. What you want to do is you want to make sure that the surface on both sides of the drum, outside and inside, are clean. So we're just going to take some sandpaper, go ahead and make sure that's cleaned up on the outside. Be sure to take the sandpaper and also go on the inside hole. Clean that up really well. You don't have to be able to eat off of it, however, it should be clean. What we're going to do is we're going to choose between our large hubless adapter or small hubless adapter. You've got to be able to pick which one fits best. Whenever possible, always try and go with the larger of the two hubless adapters. In this case, this one looks like it's going to be the best fit. We're going to put one on the outside and using the same style hubless adapter, I'm going to make sure you put one on the inside as well. I'll show you what that looks like when it goes on the drum lathe. In addition to your hubless adapter, you're also going to need to select a centering cone. In the toolbox, we have a choice of about 10 different centering cones. Pick the one that's going to fit the best in the center of the drum. For example, this one's just going to fall right on through. That one's not going to do, any, do us any good. Here we're going to select this one. If you notice how it fits sort of halfway, that's going to be called a true fit. Also we have a tension spring, a spacer, a couple different kinds of spacers that you may need, and a lock nut. Before we begin the machining process, we want to go ahead and take a reading of how much material is on this drum. If you notice on the outside of the drum, it's got a maximum diameter of 227.25 millimeters. You may have to clean that up with a little bit of sandpaper be able to, to uh, be able to read that. Here I'm going to take my drum measuring mic, make sure that it's zero. If it's not, just simply hit that zero button and go ahead and pull it apart. Find the center of your drum right across the middle make sure that the little teeth on there are in full contact with the drum. And here I can tell that I'm undersized at 188 millimeters. So this is a drum that we would technically not be able to cut. However, I'm going to use it just for demonstration purposes. Next we'll go over to the brake lathe. Before we use the brake lathe, a couple safety tips that we want to talk about. With this machine or any kind of lathe, you should always make sure that you're wearing safety glasses at all times. You're going to get a lot of metal that's going to fly off of this machine, gets in your hair, maybe later on throughout the day you, you run your fingers through your hair and now you got a little tiny particle of metal lodged in your eye. Not a fun thing to have happen. Okay, here's your power switch right down here. This turns the lathe on and off. Turn it on for you. Next we're going to have our horizontal feed handle. This is one that we're going to use uh, during the machining process of the brake drum. And we have our cross feed handle as well. Let's go ahead and set up a drum, show you what that looks like. We're going to want to work first start by putting our hubless adapter onto the brake lathe. We'll slide that onto the arbor. Then we're going to want to go ahead and put our tension spring on. And it fits right over the hubless adapter. Uh, I'm going to take that back off and show you. You notice that there's a little rise on there. And that spring kind of sits right on there just like that. I want to make sure that that's a good fit. And then we'll take our centering cone, the one that we picked earlier. Put that on there as well. 
Next, we'll go ahead and we'll grab our drum. And I always try and make uh, sure that the teeth on my uh, hubless adapters, you'll notice that there's a series of teeth on here, going all the way around. When I line these up, or I put the drum on there, I try and always make sure that one of the teeth is pointing at the 12 o'clock position, and the other one is gonna match it, just like that. Otherwise, what you're gonna get is when these teeth offset, if I were to put that drum on there and the teeth are opposite each other, just like that, rather than being lined up like that, the thin metal in the drum is going to tend to flex back and forth when these clamps are on there. So try and make sure that the, uh, the teeth are lined up. Next, we'll go ahead and install our drum. Never drop your drum down onto the arbor. Always keep control of it. Take my other hubless adapter. I'll set that on there. Next, we're going to have to select some spacers and, of course, our lock nut. Brought a couple different spacers with me. We'll see which ones fit best. Put that one on there. I'm going with the smaller one as well. And next, we're going to go ahead and install the lock nut. The lock nut is reverse thread. Okay. Spin that backwards. Next, we're going to go ahead and snug up the lock nut. It doesn't take a lot to tighten this up, just a little bit. Okay, that's all set. Next thing I like to do is go ahead and move my toolbar out of the way. The toolbar is right here this piece and that's going to hold your bit which is going to do the cutting. I'll loosen the lock nut, slide my toolbar out of the way and I want to turn the lathe on. And what I'm looking for uh, specifically during my setup is to make sure that the drum doesn't have a lot of run out. And that's that side to side movement. So you may want to take a few steps back and just sort of eyeball that rotor, much like when you were balancing a tire, and make sure that it's spinning as true as it can be. If it's not, if you're getting a lot of side-to-side -side wobble, you probably didn't cone it up properly, or maybe you didn't sand the surface of the drum enough. You may want to recheck that, go through that procedure again, cone it back up, and take another look at it. Lastly, before we begin our cutting process, we want to install the chatter strap, okay? These are located in the toolbox. We're going to wrap this around the drum. You don't have to pull it like a rubber band. And I try and get it as close to the bell opening of the drum as I can. And what this does is it's going to prevent the bit on the toolbar from chattering against the drum. The drum, if you hit one um, without a chatter band on, it almost sounds like ringing a bell. So we want to try and reduce the amount of bit chatter as much as we can. The bell's going to help us achieve that. Okay, next thing we're going to want to do is adjust our toolbar. And I'm going to get you in there as close as I can, get you the best shot. Alright, our toolbar, I already have it loose. We're going to make what's called a scratch cut first, and I'm going to move my crossfeed handle, turning this in. You can see the crossfeed uh, moving closer to the brake lathe. And I also want to double check my horizontal feed handle, and I want to move the drum in about as close to the machine as I can get it. If the drum is sticking way out here, if I were to feed this drum way out here and cut it, while it's sitting on the arbor, it tends to vibrate a lot more and it reduces the quality of your cut. Okay, with that set, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to make a scratch cut on this. I'm going to set my toolbar into the middle of the drum. Okay, and I'm going to try and get you the, the best shot that I possibly can so that you can look inside of there. Toolbar is uh, 
my bit made contact with the drum in that area. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and I'm about halfway. I'll take my wrench and I'll snug down my toolbar lock nut. Okay. I'll back it out of the way a little bit, turn my lathe on, and power switch I showed you earlier. Next thing I'm going to want to do is set my speed. You'll notice that the speed dial, it does have different speeds going all the way around it. The lowest setting is 2, the highest is 20. Uh, when we're making our cuts, we usually do uh, two fast cuts followed by one slow cut. So all told, you're generally going to have three passes of your bit across your drum. And I like to choose a speed that's speed 8 for my fast cuts. I'll snug down my thumb screw. I just made it snug. I didn't kill it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the toolbar or the bit into the drum. And when that happens, you're going to hear it. Okay, so I loosen my lock nut down here. And I'm going to slowly back this in until we hear that bit make contact. I'll tighten my lock nut, and now I'm going to go ahead, I want to move that bit all the way into the drum as far as I can, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move my horizontal feed handle, okay. all the way in, now what I'm going to do loosen my cross-section control and I'll zero out my gauge you'll notice on the dial that there is a gauge on the dial uh, it's starting with zero and it goes all the way around to 190 but each one of these little lines are going to represent two thousandths of an inch I like to never take more than two thousandths of an inch off at each pass if you do more than that Typically, you're just going to overheat the bit, compromise the quality of your cut. So let's go ahead and move it. Two thousandths of an inch. I'll snug up my lock nut. And then I'll go ahead and engage the, uh, the horizontal feed lever. And you're going to hear that going to hear that uh, bit coming across the drum. It's making its cut. Usually it takes about oh, three, four minutes for that bit to go across the drum. Uh, I raise the speed up a little higher maybe just to, to get this to go across a little faster just for the demonstration. And if you look inside it's going to be kind of difficult to see that So I'm going to take my camera here and try and get you inside that drum as best I can so that you can see. And what's happening is that bit is cutting across the, uh, the drum and we're taking off that bad glaze finish. This way your brake shoes are going to make a good stop every time. You notice that while the drum's spinning, the arbor is actually moving the drum in and out. Okay, so this drum is actually moving uh, away from the machine. Okay. The tooling bar, that's staying stationary. It doesn't move at all. Okay. Sounds like we're getting near the end of our cut, our first cut. And what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and I'll disengage my drum with the lever. And I like to turn it off. 
we'll go ahead after our first cut and see how we did. What I'm doing is I'm looking inside the drum and I'm making sure that the bit cut all the way across the drum. It looks good. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is after one fast cut, we can go ahead and take a finish cut on it. Turn my machine back on. I'll adjust my speed dial. Here we'll go down to four. It's a little quicker just for the demonstration. And we only want to adjust our speed when the brake lathe is turned on. Next step, I'll go ahead and I don't have to do anything again with my toolbar nut. I'm just going to loosen the lock nut and go ahead and run my, uh, run my feed back in with this handle. I'm taking that in as far as I can go towards the inside of the drum and you're going to hear it there it goes I've gone in as far as I can now I'll go ahead and I'm going to loosen my cross cut lock nut and just as before I'm going to take two thousandths more of an inch I engage my cutter head. Now you can hear it making that cut. On a slower speed, it's going to take um, twice the amount of time that it would with your fast cut. If you're working at a lower speed. Sometimes with this brake lathe, there's probably most shop lathes out there. Uh, they tend to be a little bit older, a little bit used. Um, so sometimes you have to sort of you know, eh, do things I guess that you wouldn't have to with a brand new brake blade. So it works just fine. It's cut many drums over the years. And while that's cutting, I kind of want to let you know a little bit more about the brake blades here. Uh, this one I have set up exclusively to cut drums. If we go down here uh, and take a look at the other one closest to the toolbox, this one I have set up just to cut brake rotors. And of course we have, uh, sort of keep a brake toolbox right up here. Inside the toolbox is where I keep all the hardware that you're going to need to uh, do any of your brake machining. Springs and adapters, lock nuts. Chatter band, sandpaper. Keep a tape measure, and of course I have your brake specification book here. Um, if you need that, which you should be checking specifications every time you machine a brake drum or a brake rotor. We'll go back over here and see how our drum is doing. Looks like we're about halfway there. I'll try and get you a little close-up shot of what's going on inside of there. Sometimes it helps if you bring a flashlight along. I'm really looking at you can see that we are uh, we're about there okay, I got my flashlight shining on there and maybe you can see uh, the progress of the of the bit going across the drum we have oh maybe about a quarter of an inch and we'll be done so I'm gonna go ahead and 
put my camera back. Okay, you can tell by the sound that her brake drum is pretty much done. So I'm going to go ahead and disengage my cutter head, turn that lever off, we'll power down the machine. I'm going to take a look inside of the drum, making sure it's cut all the way across. Go ahead and remove our chatter strap. And the last step you're going to want to take to give you that good quality finish, take a piece of sandpaper, we'll turn our lathe back on and we're going to remove that non-directional finish just by putting our sandpaper in here and going across the inside of the drum. Go ahead and take our drum off. And I'll show you what that looks like inside. You can see it's cleanly cut all the way across. And that's going to give us the desired finish that we want. 